According to Wikipedia, typology in Christian theology and in biblical exegesis is a doctrine or theory concerning the relationship of the Old Testament to the New Testament. Typology is very useful for grasping truths about the Catholic faith because it is both at the same time simple and profound. Through typology, people, places, and events from the Old Testament are seen as a foreshadowing or a prefigurement of people, places, and events in the New Testament. Typology uses storytelling to deepen our understanding about the Catholic faith. And this is much like the approach that our Lord took to explaining truth, as he spoke in parables and in stories so that everyone could understand. Please listen prayerfully and open your hearts to see the typological prefigurements that lie waiting for us in the Old Testament. Before we examine how the Battle of the Horns of Hattin was prefigured in the Old Testament by the Battle of Aphek, I would like to offer an idea. The Old Testament contains the entire history of the Israelites. The Israelites were the Old Testament people of God. Their entire history, from their inception until their ending, is completely contained in the books of the Old Testament. Similarly, the New Testament is the entire history of the new people of God, the Catholic Church. The New Testament really contains our entire history from start to finish. However, the difference is that for the Israelites, their history is entirely recorded in the Bible. Our history is still being lived out. We are still in the New Testament, even though our history is not recorded entirely in the Bible. With that concept in mind, it becomes clear why the battles from the Crusades would be prefigured in the pages of the Old Testament. If the Old prefigures the New, then events in the history of the church would be prefigured by the Old Testament. It's not just people, places, and events from the pages of the books of the New Testament, but the actual history of our church that comprises the actual New Testament. Now we are ready to look at the Battle of the Horns of Atim and how it is prefigured in the Old Testament by the battle near Aphek between the Israelites and the Philistines. The story in the Old Testament starts out with the Philistines, encamped near the Israelites and ready for battle. The Israelites go up against the Philistines, but end up retreating and losing 4,000 men. The Israelites held a council and were surprised that God allowed them to be defeated by the Philistines. They decided to take the Ark of the Covenant into battle with them the next day. Eli the high priest allows the ark to go into battle, and Eli's two sons accompany the ark into battle against the Philistines. The first book of Samuel, chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Let us fetch unto us the ark of the covenant of the Lord from Silo, and let it come in the midst of us, that it may save us from the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh, and they brought from thence the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts sitting upon the cherubims. And the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phinehas, were with the Ark of the Covenant of God. And also from the first book of Samuel chapter 4, verses 10 to 11, So the Philistines fought, and Israel was overthrown, and every man fled to his own dwelling. 
And there was an exceeding great slaughter, for there fell of Israel thirty thousand footmen. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Othni and Phinehas, were slain. After the battle was over, word went back to Shiloh, where Eli the high priest was waiting for news about the battle and the condition of the Ark of the Covenant. From the first book of Samuel, chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. And he said to Eli, I am he that came from the battle and have fled out of the field this day. And he said to him, what is there done, my son? And he that brought the news answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter of the people. Moreover, thy two sons, Ophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of God is taken. And when he had named the ark of God, he fell from his stool backwards by the door and broke his neck and died. Now that we have the story from the Old Testament in place, we can move on to the story of the New Testament. This story takes place during the Crusades, when the Christians are fighting against the Muslims in the Holy Land. Towards the end of the Second Crusade, Jerusalem is in the hand of the Christians. The Christian king of Jerusalem, Baldwin V, has died, and the city is in need of a new king. Two emerging factions developed to seek the throne of Jerusalem. Guy of Lusignan and Raymond III of Tripoli contended for the throne. In the meantime, the various factions of Muslims that are surrounding the Christian kingdom of Jerusalem have united under one ruler, Saladin. The disunity of the Christians causes tactical mistakes to be made, giving Saladin the advantage. The Christian forces go up against Saladin in the plains of Hattin, near the Lake of Galilee. The Battle of Hattin took place on July 4th, 1187, between the Crusader Kingdom of Jerusalem and the forces of the Ayyud Sultan Salad Adin, known in the west as Saladin. It is also known as the Battle of the Horns of Hattin, from the nearby extinct volcano. The Muslim armies under Saladin captured or killed the vast majority of the Crusader forces, removing their capability to wage war. During the battle, the Christians had carried with them a large relic of the true cross of Christ. It was carried by the Bishop of Acre, who was taking the place of the alien patriarch, Heraclius. Also, the army's standard was the relic of the true cross, carried by the Bishop of Acre, who was there in place of the alien patriarch, Heraclius. The Muslims won a stunning victory over the Crusader army, most of the army was killed or captured. Also, the Muslims took the true cross of Christ. They fixed it to a pole upside down and took it back to Damascus, where it was paraded around their streets. The Muslim forces had captured the royal tent of King Guy and the true cross after the Bishop of Acre was killed in the fighting. The true cross was fixed upside down on a lance and sent to Damascus. In the aftermath of the battle, when word of the crusader defeat reached Rome, Pope Urban III died instantly upon hearing the news. According to the chronicler or Newell, News of the defeat caused Pope Urban III to die of shock.
now that we have the Old Testament and New Testament stories in place, we can look at how the battle between the Israelites and the Philistines at Aphek was a prefigurement of the Battle of the Horns of Hattin in the year 1187. The Israelites set out to battle with the Philistines, who were pressing further and further into the Israeli territory. In the Bible, the Philistines were a constant threat to the Israelites, and many campaigns were made against them. The Crusaders set out to battle with the Muslims, who are strengthening their position against the Christian Kingdom of Jerusalem. The Muslims were a constant threat to Christian medieval Europe, and many crusades were made against them. The Israelites suffered a stunning defeat at the hands of the Philistines, where 30,000 Israelites fell in a single day. The Crusaders started the Battle of the Horns of Hattin with 20,000 men. After the battle, nearly all the men were either killed or captured by the Muslims. The loss of their main fighting force led to the loss of the entire Christian Kingdom of Jerusalem. Eli the High Priest was the rightful caretaker of the Ark of the Covenant. However, he was too old and weak to accompany the Ark into battle. His two priest sons went with the Ark instead, and they were both killed in the battle. The Patriarch Heraclius was the rightful caretaker of the Relic of the True Cross. However, he was ailing and weak and couldn't accompany the relic into battle. The Bishop of Acre went with the relic instead, and he was killed in the battle. The Israelites were badly defeated and the Philistines confiscated the most holy object of the Israelites, which devastated their morale. The Crusaders were badly defeated also, and the Muslims confiscated the most holy relic of the Christians, which was devastating news to all of Christendom. Upon hearing the news of the stunning defeat of the Israelites and of the confiscation of the Ark of the Covenant, the high priest Eli died suddenly and on the spot. Upon hearing the news of the stunning defeat of the Crusaders and the confiscation of the relic of the true cross of Christ, Pope Urban III instantly died of shock. <laughs> 